I am so glad you're joining us today for a reading from the Jesus Storybook Bible. Remember, this book helps us see the stories in the Bible and remember Jesus and what he did for us in each story. So, get your book if you have it, get ready to follow along and read along with the story, and then at the end of the story, there'll be a fun activity that you can do with your family. God to the Rescue Joseph and his brothers grew old and died. But their children's children stayed on in Egypt where they became a very large family. Later on, a new king began to rule. But this pharaoh didn't remember Joseph and he didn't like God's people. He made them into his slaves and beat them and made them work harder and harder. God's people cried out to God to rescue them. And God heard them. He remembered his promise to Abraham. He would look after his people. He would find a way to set them free. One day, Moses was looking after sheep when something caught his eye. A bush was behaving very oddly. It was flickering with flames, but its leaves weren't burning up. He took a closer look. Moses! boomed a big voice. Moses leapt back. Well, the bush was talking to him. I have heard my people's cries, God said. I have seen their tears. So I have come down to rescue them. Go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go free. Moses was afraid. But God said, I will be with you. So Moses went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, Moses began. God says, God, said Pharaoh, never heard of him. Moses kept going. God says, let his people go free. Why should I, Pharaoh said, don't want to, won't. So he didn't. So God gave Pharaoh ten warnings, called plagues. First, God turned the river Nile into blood. No one could drink the water. But still Pharaoh would not let them go. So God made frogs come hopping and leaping and jumping. In your bed frogs, in your hair frogs, in your soup frogs, all over everywhere frogs. Make them go away, Pharaoh screamed. Then your people can go. So God took the frogs away. But Pharaoh changed his mind. You can't go, he said. Then God sent zillions of gnats. But still Pharaoh said no. So then God sent swarms of flies. Flies buzzing in your eyes, flies. And after that, sickness. And horrible boils and huge hailstones, and a storm of locusts. Then darkness, when it should have been day, until it seemed that the whole world, creation, everything was coming undone, falling back into darkness and emptiness and nothingness. But each time Pharaoh said, Make it stop and then I'll let them go. And each time when God made it stop, Pharaoh changed his mind and said, Actually, no, you can't go. Well, finally, Moses warned Pharaoh, Obey God, or he will have to send the worst thing of all. And Pharaoh just laughed. So God said, The oldest boy in each family of Egypt must die, but my people will be safe. God told his people to take their best lamb, to kill it, and to put some of its blood on their front doors. When God passes over your house, Moses explained, God will see the blood and know that the lamb died instead of you. That night, it was just as God had said. Suddenly, piercing the darkness, echoing down the corridors of the palace, came a blood-curdling scream. Pharaoh's oldest son had died. 
At last, Pharaoh did what God said. Get out! Pharaoh shouted. Just go! And so, that very night, Moses and God's people fled out of Egypt and out of slavery. They were free at last. God's people would always remember this great rescue and call it Passover. But an even greater rescue was coming. Many years later, God was going to do it again. He was going to come down once more to rescue his people. But this time, God was going to set them free forever and ever. Okay, so now you've heard about Moses and the burning bush. That's pretty phenomenal that that bush was on fire, but it didn't burn. And that's how God was talking to Moses. So what I want you to do now is gather just a few simple supplies. I would get a plastic cup. If you don't have one at home, that's fine. Maybe an empty toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll that you can cut in half. Something that is a round shape because this is gonna be our bush. Next, what you're gonna do is get some paper. I happen to have colored construction paper on hand. If you don't, you can use plain white paper and just uh, color it like fire, different shades of red, yellow, orange, and just make it look like fire. So I cut these into strips like this, and then I crinkle them up to make them all wiggly like fire. So crinkled, 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 and then I kind of pull them apart a little bit more. I put a strip of glue on my cup on the outside and on the inside so it made it extra fiery and full. And then I just glued the strips all the way around. You could also draw with a green marker the bush on the outside if you wanted to and the flames kind of going on around it. Then maybe at the end, you can sit down with your family and tell them, what does this mean, this cup with this paper on it? Tell them the story that you just heard and use this as part of the way to tell the story to your family. Have fun. John fourteen six, And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John fourteen six.